What's up, everybody? It's Mind Pump time. All right, we're going to give away something really cool right now. Maps Aesthetic is one of our most popular programs. It's a bodybuilder-inspired workout program, and we're going to give it away for free right now to one lucky winner. Here's how you can enter to win that program. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours. If we pick your comment as the best comment of all the comments, if it's the king of the comments, you'll win access to Maps Aesthetic. Now, for the rest of you, subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, so that you know when we're going to do these contests, which, by the way, happens every single day. Every single episode we drop comes with a giveaway or a way to win something free. So do those two things. Also, we are running a huge promotion right now, and it ends literally 24 hours after this episode drops in, in like a day or less. So it's ending very, very soon. Maps Anabolic is 50% off, and the Shredded Summer Bundle, which is multiple programs put together, is also... 50% off. Now, if you want to get those programs because you're smart or you just want to learn more, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just remember to use the code April Special with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Oh. Are you hearing yourself okay, Adam? Uh, Yeah, no. I'm yeah, 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 guys. Oh, are you tired? Or? We're nice and loud now. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm good. I'm good. Yawning all the time? Yeah, no, no, I'm good. He's just bored with you. I started the new diet last night. You started the new... Oh, you're doing a carnival. No, right? I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm doing my own thing. Matter of fact, I'm going to write a book afterwards. What's good? What's it Adam called? Navor. That's right. Yeah. It's a like <laughs> an Adam yeah. Navor. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, that was a bit of a stretch. It's I. First of all, there's no way I could do the carnivore. I, I like I, I like started thinking about like. Yeah, you don't have the discipline. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> Remember that one time when we fasted? Only the most disciplined yeah. motherfucker yeah. of the group here. No, Wait a minute. No, yeah. actually, it's no. true. Yeah. We well, all did a long I'm fast I'm going to bring once. it up. I'm going to throw you under And the bus. you gave up first. Yeah. I did. You I did. did. Yeah. I, I did. think it was like you went like four hours. But the main reason for that was I was already in fantastic shape, and I didn't want to lose oh my God. any weight. Oh, my That's God. That's a great excuse. You know, and yeah, you guys had a lot of flub still to go, and so I figured like... <laughs> They could use three days. Yeah. Did you, say, did you yeah. say flub? You said fluff. <laughs> like it's flubber, like it bounces and everything. It's yeah, blubber yeah. and fluffy at the yeah. same time. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not even firm blubber. No, so I'm going to do- That's fine. I'm going to do like a elimination diet, carnivore-esque, whatever the fuck I feel like thing. So nothing. You're going to so do it's, nothing. It's, it's <laughs> made gonna, up. You're just going to basically- No, no, no. Okay. It looks very carnivore-esque. Okay. Give us the details. Break it down. Yeah. What's the structure? Uh, ground beef and rice. Ground beef and rice. Yeah, that's I mean, it. That's the yeah. that's primarily it. I mean, I can have ribeye and tri tip. So and, meat and rice. Yeah, rice is going to be the one carb that I allow myself to have. Now I'm going to have. So the, you're going to eat like I do, basically. Probably. Yeah, I'm going to throw yeah. on some vegetables. But look Except a lot the, better yeah, when I'm done. Okay. Huh? Yeah. 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 I said, but look a lot better when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got you there. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. So uh, it's going to be red meat and rice and yeah. then that's it and that's going to be your base yeah mm. yeah what if it's the rice dude what if it's the grain well so here's in, and the, the, no that's a great and that's a good question i'll probably end up having maybe maybe depends on how how bored i get of eating that way some berries like we talked about mm. I, All you need is some rapini, right? Mm, is that what you do? You shake do your head like, rapini. You have to, you have to shake yeah, your head. Yeah. When you say I don't. Some sardines. I, I don't there. think that. Um, I don't think it's rice that's af affecting me. I, I don't think that's triggering my autoimmune. God, you know how sad you would be if it was. Uh, mm. A little bit. I mean, I could switch over to yams or sweet potato just fine. I got mm. no problem with that. Really? Yeah, yeah. You would be okay never eating rice again. I mean, I guess if it, it cleared up my psoriasis completely, it'd be okay. yeah, it'd be worth yeah. It. It'd be yeah. Worth it. So that's kind of so that's the mission here, right? Is like it, I'm not trying to follow somebody's protocol. I'm doing a elimination type of diet. I'm choosing to use a carnivore esque type of protocol, mm -hmm. yeah. and really, it is like there, I'm going to eliminate a lot of things that I eat a lot. You know, I eat a lot of vegetables. Um, I eat a lot of avocado. Uh, I eat a lot of bell peppers and mm -hmm. tomatoes and mm -hmm. things like that. So I'm trying to eliminate a lot of those things that potentially could be it. Um, obviously, no sugars and refined carbohydrates, things like that. Are no candy, huh? Of course, that's not hard for me. This can be fun. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Justin? Yeah. That's what we're, we're gonna, gonna do. We're gonna load Let's his test freezer. It. With Let's the test his pie. Yeah. Well, it's only yeah. going for thirty days. I can do anything for thirty days. We'll, we'll sprinkle so. sugar in his water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. I've been drinking a lot of water I, today. I'm I tell you so what, awesome, though. But, oh, I mean, I started crisis. it yesterday. Um, I had I had uh, you know, sashimi and rice and then for lunch and then I went to um, also fish too, yeah any any meat any right? animal meat yeah any gotcha. any animal meat uh, but I I imagine that I'm gonna have to do a lot of ground beef and red meat because I'm not getting very much anywhere else I'm not mm -hmm. getting enough nutrients everywhere else mm -hmm. uh, so you know I think the the, the bulk of it's gonna your look skin does look nicer today 
stop. That's what. That's because it's a caldera, dude. That's what that is. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You see someone making a little bit of, of a sheen. Yeah, it yeah. gives me a little bit of a no, sheen. No, I mean, if you someone's like, it looks like he dumps look, it on his we're, face. We're, look, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, that is like two drops. Uh, Andrew, focus on the face right now in the head. Look at that. I mean, it, it's like uh, use a little at, powder. Look at it's ping but, ping. Yeah. It makes the sound. It's almost too shiny in my face. Yes. Easy. It's very clean. Very nice. Very. Did you dye your beard, you fucker? No. Really? I did not. Right, Vic? Looking at the Vic's in here today. Looking so. at our, our barber I, over yeah, there. Yeah, no, she didn't. No, no. She asked me, though. Tell the truth. She asked me. Is he is he dying anything? No. No, nothing. No, okay. see? Right. And she asked me. She goes, do you do you want to color that? And I yeah. said, what do you think it looks like? She didn't ask me she that. Goes, no, I said, well, he is younger than us. I said, how do you think it looks? And she says, well, you're by far the most handsome out of the three guys, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't change anything she about you. She told me the same thing. Are you lying to everybody? She, yeah. hey, she didn't even offer to dye my beard. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, eh, she's No, she told me, work. she's like, there's, there's a lot of work with <laughs> yeah. Sal. She's like, yeah. she, it's a <laughs> Silver really works for you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Should I have to raise your prices? It's a lot of dye if I do his beard. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, hey, how fun is that with, what do you call him? Funny Mike? Yeah, I call him Funny Mike. Yeah, yeah. So, so people don't know this. We got a guy coming in, and he's uh, an improv instructor. Yeah. And uh, no. Justin experienced this already. Yeah, yeah, he did. Right. Just I, so I've, I've wanted this for you guys. Justin took improv classes a while ago, and all of us noticed uh, he just how much better he was on the podcast. Yeah, you he went. Tell. He went from really bad to like not so bad. Yeah, he's, he's, he's now yeah, terrible. I appreciate was, that. No, yeah, no. I mean, no, but it, but this I have to try you guys. Okay. So the goal is this guy comes in, he has us do these improv exercises, which are weird. Yeah. But the goal is to increase to get our flow to even more connection. More. Right. Like I. I want to think, you know, what you're thinking. Thinking. See? Whoa. I knew what you were going to say. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, see how I'm part of it? It's working. <laughs> it's working. It's, it's a lot of fun, though, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good time. I think it's interesting. I think uh, a, it would be really hard to do that in front of a crowd, though. Isn't that what you do in the it, at some point? Yeah, at some point. It, it kind of builds up to that. So the, the hard part for me was when they would do monologues and things, and they'd kind of put you on the spot, and you have to, like, go off on something for at least a minute, a full minute, and then to five minutes. And I know you're just like, oh, I love this, because I can just keep talking forever. Yeah. Like, for me, that was a, a bit of a struggle. Yeah, that's but, true. Yeah. But like, today's exercise, you're going to be talking a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, raise my hand. I don't know what I'm going to say. I'll do that one. Yeah. Uh, but I enjoy it. I think it's good. It's definitely challenging, um, but I hope it makes us better. The people and the people watching will know. They'll we'll let us see. Know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how, how it all Can the audience out. see this big ass banner we have in here, Doug? I don't know. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> what the fuck this is this This wasn't part of my design okay, for so, uh, upgrading the studio, yeah. So by it's way. basically this. If this thing wasn't already about Sal enough, now we got a big ass <laughs> banner <laughs> to remind <laughs> everybody to. <laughs> Come on. There should be like a whole <laughs> band over there. I know. Sal yeah. is the champion. Hey, Wait, why aren't you playing Sal the is the <laughs> does his, Hey, does his, his head Nobody fit in the camera still? Can everybody calm down? All right, Doug. Sal is the champion of D the world. Doug's showing the banner right now, uh, and uh, so you guys can see what it looks like. It's yeah. just the book stuff. And you know what? The goal is to, to have that behind oh, it's me important. when I'm doing video uh, intros. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't use a, a accordion when you were doing my music. Did I, like, I would have been perfect. Oh, damn. Uh, I missed the opportunity. You missed out yeah, on that. Yeah. So, uh, no, it's all right. It's not bad. It is a little loud. Yeah. I do feel now you it. start your it's branding. You yeah. start your official tour this week. Is that right? Yeah, Thursday I go to LA. I'm going to do um, Max Lugavere's podcast. Good friend of mine, love Max. Everybody knows Max. Uh, Jen Cohen, she's going to do her podcast, and I'm trying to see if I can get Aaron Alexander too at the same time mm. before I come back. So cool, I get, I get to talk about uh, my favorite subject. Mm. Yeah, yeah, resistance, resistance training, uh, resistance. Training. Dude, did you guys Benefits. feel? Did you guys feel the little mini earthquake we had over the weekend? Oh uh, yeah, it was like a three point uh, nine or three point something. Yeah. What was that? Over the you weekend. didn't feel that? No. What day? Yeah, uh, was, was it, it Sunday? Saturday night or, or Saturday? Saturday? We so, were together Saturday night. Yeah, it was like when I got home. I think it was Saturday night. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Do you know when it was? I think it was Saturday night. So here's the weird thing. I didn't feel it, but Jessica did. She was upstairs. Oh, really? I was downstairs. And then she's like, oh my God, she called me. Oh, I felt I'm like, I didn't feel anything. I mean, it was significant. It definitely kind of shook the house and I, I heard it and everything. So, so Wow, I didn't hear nothing. So speaking of earthquakes, okay. did you guys hear about this gender reveal party? I got to find out where it was that caused an earthquake. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I saw the, the headline and the title for that, but that sounds how like, does that happen? No, that sounds no. like clickbait to me. No, yeah, dude. no, it's real. It's absolutely real. I'm pulling it up right now. I It was on a science- How big of an explosion do you need to create to have an earthquake follow that? Watch. So revealing- Okay, so let me tell you what happened, right? Uh, I'm going to read. So residents in a number of towns in New Hampshire reported a mysterious earthquake at around 7 p.m. on April 20th, shaking homes and cracking foundations. So what they did- It's going to tell us what they did here. Everybody's like, we heard this huge blast. I guess they used- 
explosives <laughs> to, to show like the the, the gender of, of the like, baby. Seriously, can we stop with these things? When did this start? Because do you know that other gender reveal party that like they the they, forest fire the forest fire the entire like this is up in like Northern California. I think. So so listen to this right. So they used tannerite. You guys know what tannerite is? No, what is that? It, it goes boom boom, yeah. and they used it in a quarry because bang, they bang. thought it would be safe. And a bunch of calls came in afterwards. They're like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Uh, there's an earthquake. I so, mean, how many explosives are used? So they went down into a quarry to do a gender reveal party? Yeah. And imagine the explosion that they had to do for people to feel in their homes and crack foundations. That's what I'm saying. This is this is just like, you You think you're way too important, dude. Yeah. Like, our kid is going to be a boy or girl. Let's blow some shit up and show yeah. everybody. No, nobody cares. You know that these parties didn't, stop it. These didn't exist uh, when my kids were younger, just like 15 years ago. No. They didn't have gender reveal parties. We, yeah. we were busy doing shit. <laughs> we were blowing you know, up. Like, I was avoiding a lot of like kid parties. I know. Could you believe yeah. that, though? Did you uh, watch the UFC fight this weekend? No, dude, but I did see the clip of dude. maybe one of the best cards in ever. I was so mad I left, uh, by the way. I went to go see Adam uh, you know, at his house. We went to dinner. Yeah, and, no, you uh, guys had a, you yeah, guys we had, we had a moment. Without, That's yeah, nice. It was yeah. nice. Yeah. You you it was actually talk. refreshing. A lot, lot less talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, we... <sighs> I was there for the first one with, um, you know, where, uh, what's his name? Got his, his shin just, that's the one I saw broken half. So that's this either the second or third time I've seen that UFC where the guy goes to throw a kick, it's checked. It was Anderson it, Silva that it did happen to oh, originally. Oh, and if body, oh nice. Oh no, he hurts, he hurts leg, and it is up. Watch this, he checks it. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, wow. Flops and, and it happened with against Weidman. Weidman, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Wait, so, so this time Weidman goes and he's just doing like he's just doing a leg kick and he's he's swinging his leg around, hits, connects, and then you just see his leg immediately break and flop kind of over the back. And then it you, he doesn't even realize it. Yeah, in slow mo yeah, it goes to stand on it. Oh. He's got no support, boom, falls. It was heartbreaking yeah. to watch. So for the way that it was explained to me, so I'm, I'm not a Muay Thai expert. I'm not a striking expert. I did a little yeah. bit of boxing, but it's nothing. And I, Purple somebody belt. explained to me, no, there's no belts in boxing. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the Brazilian. That's why I avoided it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm all about the belts. Yeah. So anyway, the, the, the way it was explained to me is because the way that the, the tibia is, yeah. If you hit it at the because it's kind of a long bone, so if you take out a tibia, it's not perfectly round, right? It's kind of like shaped, kind of like a this. like it's long, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you hit it on that end, it's very strong. If you hit it kind of on the side, yeah. it's much easier to break. Yeah. So someone told me that is the result of a misplaced kick because there's so much strength in the tibia at a particular angle, and then it's also is that weak. it, or is it also like un unreported previous injury, like you know from training? That, that was my speculation. Yeah, but see, I'm thinking like you would have to have like a, a hairline fra fracture or you something. Would, exactly, but a fracture there, yeah. you would you'd feel. And you probably wouldn't be able yeah, to fight, right? I don't know. Yeah, it was just so so freakish how that all went down. And it was the very first exchange. Mm. You know, he just and then boom, oh man, that set the stage. And then I guess the rest of the fights, I didn't even get to see him until later. They were all epic, dude. dude. Really? Yeah. So Ro what else Rose happened? Rose fought for the belt. So she was the first That was like one of the most inspiring fights I've oh, seen the, in a while. Which and she was amazing. Major underdog going into it. I, I bet my brother that I thought now she was, lost her previous fight. Yeah. She yeah, she lost she lost the belt. She had the belt before, and then the girl that's got it right now. I forget her name, but she's badass. And she kicked her and knocked her out. Yeah. Okay. And Whaley has landed several of those inside low kicks. Oh! Okay, yeah, yeah. See, straight to her chin, put her to sleep, and then Usman, man, that guy just. I, Joe, did you see the post that Joe Rogan wrote no. about her? Oh yeah, Joe Ro wrote him. Excuse me, wrote about Usman, just saying he's pound for pound. He thinks is the best fighter to ever fight. Really? Yeah. Well, he's he's two away from beating Anderson Silva's record. Right. Well, Silva's what sixteen? Yeah, sixteen, but without a loss. And he's just he just keeps getting better. And this fight well, was Masvidal's really, a, a you know he's crazy a beast. Good. Well, yeah. yeah, because they fought last oh, time. That's right. And he, he took him, him he yeah, took him dude. five rounds on a six day notice last time. So I was really excited about that fight. I was mm. like, dude, this dude hung with Usman last time mm. with a six-day notice, 20 pounds overweight. And he cleaned yeah. his clock this time. Oh, bro. Oh. And the ball, the superlative. Oh! 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 
you, you see all like the debris just because you yeah. got hit. So, it was gnarly. So speaking of these fights, right? Did you guys see the 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 posts and the shit that Jake Paul is saying to Dana White? Yeah. Okay, so this is the thing now. They're getting into this kind of like trolling again. They're going to this back and forth kind of like word war, right? Jake Paul is much better at the like how to how to how to use media to fuck with the other guy. Do you think it's him or do you think he has somebody who's helping him? I don't know. But Hmm. whoever it is, he does a good job because he put Dana in a corner. Because here's what he did. Instead of because Dana got mad, he's like, look, if you approach my fighters under contract again, we're going to you know do a lawsuit. Yeah, we're gonna take legal action. So Jake did the the very smart thing. He said, "Here's the deal. Here's how much I made for my fight. Here's yeah. how much we paid Ben Askren, which is more than you pay any of your other fighters. You need to pay your fighters more. You're greedy or whatever. How do you? How does Dana White rebound from that? You, that makes him look really bad. That's going to cause a little bit of a stir amongst the fighters, and you know, some little bit of animosity. I don't think so. No. I, I think they know that. Yeah. No, it's but not, I think what it does. I mean, Brennan, that's Brennan Schaub has been talking about that forever, yeah. right? But what, what it does is it it could stir up so much like, oh, we want to see Jake Paul get his ass kicked, or we right. want to see whatever that he may actually get an opportunity to fight someone who's big if there's well, a lot of money involved. I thought it was small, uh, smart, too, that he was pointing at uh, you know John Jones and like trying to get him to fight uh, you know, in that, that, that fight that everybody wants to see. And so now, what's, like, your guys pressure is, on that. what's your guys' take on something like that, right? Somebody calling out like you was like, what do you think the solution is? Or do you think that Dana should pay the fighters more? Or do you think that, I mean, if it wasn't for the UFC, a lot of these fighters would never even be known. Like, where do you, where do you stand on that argument? So here's the reality. I know business. Enough. I don't want to hear the reality. I want to hear your, your I, I'll your give opinion. you my, yeah, yeah, my opinion is based off reality. Okay. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, that's usually not the case. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's also not true. Yeah. No, no. No, look, look, you guys know enough about business to know this. It's easy to look on the outside That's and right. be like, oh, they deserve to be paid more. That's right. The reality is that Dana White took the UFC, which was a fledgling company. Mm-hmm. They were barely making money, if none, if any at all, and turned it into a profitable business. So to look on the outside and say these people de- deserve to make more money, you have no idea what that what that looks like, how he's running it. Right. And what kind of mountain they've climbed to get to. And where he's they done are. a good job of building this incredible brand. Yeah. So can he pay them more? I don't know. And what does that look like? Now, in my opinion, I think he's doing a good job. Obviously, UFC's crushing. Right. But will this pressure change things? I don't know. I mean, I think naturally they're going to continue to scale up like they have. But I agree with you. So that's why I was curious which way you would go with that. Because it reminds me when I worked at 24 and I'd have trainers, right, that when I was managing there, when I had trainers that were working underneath me. And, you know, they put in a couple years in there. They get pretty good at what they're doing. And then they start looking at the math like, man, I'm only making – you know, 50% of yeah. wh- what this person is paying for. And they right away are just like, this is, you know, bullshit. This is bullshit. I right. should be getting paid so much more. If I go do this privately, I get to collect all that money. But what you just don't think about when you're in working for that big, massive company is the amount of leads right. and revenue they, they potentially generate for you that you would have to the drum millions up. of dollars of marketing they've already put That's into right. it, all yeah. the materials they provide right. you it's, and the it's, clientele. It's no different than a teenage kid be telling his parents or her parents or whatever, I'm going to move out. How much is rent? I could afford that. I have a job here. It's not that big of a deal. And every parent you know, that hears this is like, all right, yeah. go and see cool. if you can go actually do, it. <laughs> do all that because it's way more challenging than you think. Right. You think it's so easy. It's the same thing when people look at companies and say, the CEO is getting paid so much and the employees are whatever. Yeah. Why is this happening or whatever? That's not how it works. And, and Jake Paul could make that argument all day long that, you know, oh. No, he's this, playing politics, which is smart. Yeah, man. it's smart. And like his angle is smart, but it's still, you're talking about one fight. You know, how many people does Dana employ? You know, how yeah. many fighters that wouldn't get a big payday like yep. that mm-hmm. because it's not a big celebrity Solid fight point. that are making legitimate money that have the opportunity to work their way yeah. up the rankings and actually get paid and, well. And how long is Jake Paul going to last doing this? Right. There's only At some point, he's going to have to fight a real fighter because people are going to want to see better and better fighters. Right. And once he gets his ass kicked, the show's over. There's not going to be a show anymore. But now that he's winning, they're kind of excited and people hate him. Yeah. But he loses a couple times. It's done. He's, his couple, brand is won. wasn't like won. Tyson Fury or whatever. Like I was hearing talks of that. That's the rumor. Because that's a real fighter. You mm-hmm. know, that's that's somebody that, you know, boxing wise, like it would really like put a start. Isn't on. there's two Furies, right? There are they brothers or there's a there's a Tyson and then there's another one, right? No maybe look at this. Look at the uh Fury boxing brothers or something like that. I, th- I think they're related, right? There's two guys that uh I know that I, there's Tyson Fury, which I think is the the most mm-hmm. famous and the big one. I don't follow boxing, so I know somebody's yeah, cringing right now me trying to talk names. about yeah. boxing. But I know that who he's calling out isn't the the big 
brother. Oh, it's not the, the it's not main, the main main dude, but okay. it's another. It's a, his. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's a brother. Maybe Doug could hurry up. Now I, I heard that he was uh, going. Uh, that there was talks with Floyd Mayweather. That's his. That's his older brother. Logan. Oh, it is Logan and him have been talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, I thought he booked that. Didn't he book that? He, uh, maybe. maybe that would be interesting. But Floyd, you know, Floyd, he's all about the... You yeah, know, what the you got for me over there, Doug? Nothing. Nothing? No connection. Fu Fury uh, Fury boxing guys? No, he's got no connection. I have, no, I have to look it up on my phone. Oh, you have no connection. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not going to the Oh, the, the, the tech not gods are at you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> not again, Doug. Not again, oh, no. Doug. Ah, Speaking Fury. of uh, celebrities that are really annoying, um, I know I'm not a basketball fan, but boy, does LeBron James irritate that crap out of me. <sighs> Wow, is that guy annoying? Super annoying. Just, I'm just glad he's finally getting some pushback from all his bullshit, dude. I'm I not, it, it sucks because I'm such a I'm such a fan of his his game, dude. Like he's he's argue, ruins it. He's one of the best players to ever play. But the, the thing that I loved about you know Michael Jordan is he left the politics alone, dude. Mm -hmm. He just stayed out of that. Kobe did a good job of doing the same. You know, thing too. okay. So here's the problem: the second you have an opinion and you act virtuous, you open yourself up to all your hypocrisies. And LeBron is chock full of hypocrisies. Loves to call out some stuff. Mm -hmm. Really, does he really care? No, because he's paid very heavily by a country that takes people because of the religion, puts them in working camps, and uh, violates human rights all the time. Will never say a word about that. Right. Really doesn't give a shit. He wants people to think he gives a shit because he's behind his, you know, his, his super expensive 20 foot walls and whatever. Full of crap. I hate that. It noises shit. Yeah, no, you're over here talking about oppression, but yet you've got children making your shoes that you're fucking hustling out, dude. Come that, on. That's what I mean. Like yeah, he opens mm -hmm. himself up and he acts like he's so whatever, but he's not. You're full of shit. Yeah, no. You're just a very, I very wealthy too, talent. Lucky man. You're a lucky man. You I think he went too far though on this one. I think this one even uh yeah. even my even my like super left friends are just like, oh, you know, that's Yeah, we don't want to no. That was a that was a, a pretty uh justified shooting by that officer. I mean, he was sa he saved the life of somebody else. I'm sorry. Right. If I'm if if someone's trying to stab me, I hope a, some a cop shoots them. I really do because yeah. uh, people die from knife wounds all the time. And by the way, have you guys seen videos of uh, how uh, people getting stabbed even after they've been shot or stabbing other people after they've been shot? Yeah, it happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's not something that you you know you you take lightly. Yeah, no. that was very very justified. Yeah, no, I, I agree with it. Yeah. Which is that's what's going on, right? I mean that that officer is not in trouble or anything like that. I haven't followed it since like the breaking. I made a comment about LeBron saying something right afterwards. I just this is so stupid for you to just open your mouth and to open your mouth so early. Like it like happened and then he, right away. He was already now. There was that funny meme that went around because he was saying apparently like, oh, the police officer could have didn't have to use that much for I don't know something like that. And people are like, this is the same guy that falls down when someone touches him. Yeah, in yeah, a game yeah. and it yeah, complains. Yeah, flops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. There's a lot of there's a lot of memes and funny. So I've seen like some skits that our officers are doing on TikTok now too. They're like, hey, LeBron, that's somebody smart. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I was having this conversation with Jessica. The most powerful communication tool that exists right now is our memes or f short, humorous videos, but memes for sure. If you want to get your point across and you want it to spread fast, mm -hmm. if you make a funny meme or a meme that's like tongue-in-cheek or whatever mm -hmm. that people like, within days that, and it actually has a strong impact. It's the political cartoon of today, and political cartoons have always had lots of power. So, yeah, yeah. And speaking along those lines, have you guys seen the, this is right, this is, I, I'm sure you guys got tagged, have you guys seen the articles about this uh, climate plan and how they're they're like, oh, it's going to limit us to eating four pounds yes, of meat? I have. So, is, okay, is it true? Uh, it, it, it equated to like uh, one burger per month. So it's okay. So there, this is this is I love this, right? Yeah. So no, not exactly. Okay. So what it, what he said, what happened was, is Biden came out and said. By the way, I love it when politicians do this. They make a promise for some time in the future. Free pizza for everyone. When they're not going to be around <laughs> because it's like the next guy's going to have to worry about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So he made this thing and he said, we are going to reduce, uh, we're going to cut our emissions in half by 2030. Of course, you'll be out of office by then and whatever. The next guy's going to have to figure it out and mm -hmm. not a big deal. But anyway, this is what we're going to do. So, so I forgot who it was. This university came out and said, okay, here's what would have to happen in order to accomplish this particular goal. And one of the things that they wrote in there was, we're, we're going to have to limit our red meat consumption uh, by like 90%. And so that's where they got that. that. But it wasn't part of the plan. 
for us to not well, eat. What about meat? all the factories around the world that yeah. just emit like a, an insane amount of carbon? Dude, so I, I heard that was bullshit. I heard that yeah. was like a, a Fox News stat that went what, out. No, that, it was. They, not, they were just trying to make. No, they took this university's hypothetical and then pinned it on. But Biden didn't say specifically that. All he said is. He didn't say a plan, actually. He just said, we're going to cut emissions in half by 2030. Yeah, see, I hate reporting on even shit yeah. like that because then it's not even real news, yeah. dude. It's not uh, real. Yeah. He, he didn't say that. It's, you know, we it's talked about this a long time. Yeah, we talked about this a long time ago. It's like, you got to be so careful now because the things that go viral are these like absurd extremes yeah. that do not represent the majority. The majority of people don't agree with that. It, yeah. You know, and somebody is, they're taking <laughs> a, a study or a single thing said and then they're taking it and they're running with something crazy. That'll like that. never work here in America. Of course dude. not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you can't if you, take away my burgers. No, here's the thing, though, and, and I've gotten into discussions uh, in our forum about this. It, it, this is how you know when someone's really serious about, uh, you know, improving uh, our, our climate, uh, you know, reducing pollution. Do you support nuclear power? If they say no, you know they're full of shit because there is no technology at all today that even comes close to nuclear power's ability to give us power with minimal or almost no waste. And I know this because the technology today is uh, with nuclear power is incredible. That literally could solve yeah. everything right now. Well, but they don't want to solve everything. One side has their lobby group and the other side has their lobby group and they like to keep it that way. I mean, you guys saw that whole, um, you, you know, where they uncovered CNN and, and how they basically, uh, that one reporter was, oh, yeah. was kind of unveiling that a lot of it was propaganda, that they were like really like, they had massive efforts in that direction to, uh, you know, get Trump out of office. And so uh, the other part, the, the second part of that was now we're going to turn towards climate control. And that was like the big initiative from like the news media. Yeah, you need to have a, a, a scary problem, it, right? You, you gotta have it. You get people to do what to you want views. because I'm telling you right now, we could really solve it if you if you do your research and look at these current generation nuclear reactors. Because the ones that in the past that have caused problems were old tech. By the way, if you add the nuclear disasters and you compare them to the oil disasters and the pollution, all that stuff, they don't even come close anyway. But nonetheless, the current technology with nuclear, extremely safe, extremely efficient, and produces little to no waste. Um, but they don't bring that up because that's an actual solution. What they want are, you know, more problems. Let's, yeah. let's have more problems. Yeah. Fear, fear, fear. Yeah, let's get yeah. scared. Anyway, uh, let's talk about our workouts. How are you guys doing with your training? We haven't talked about, we talked about this last episode, but we haven't seen each other since. Yeah, no, I uh, I posted, I posted, uh, I, I don't do that enough. I know every time I do that, I get all kinds of traction on my social media. I think it added a bunch of people I and mean, I think the views on it are beyond anything else that I post. Anytime I do like me exercising. It's so funny. Exercising or my food. It's like mm -hmm. everybody wants to, uh, everybody wants to see. Um, but we were we had that debate recently about the the parallel squat. And so I did a video of me. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Squat, Very nice looking squat. Squatting barefoot. I mean, it's been a long time to get there, right? Like, so it took me a long time to get that kind of depth. It took me even longer to get to a place where I could do that with good control barefoot. Uh, without my my ankles now are you clock. while you're doing it are you still having to really concentrate on everything or does it feel like it happens no no no, no. I, I have to really concentrate so that was only 185 pounds right which is relatively light for me for squatting where do you find that it breaks down in that same position my feet foot? feet but how much weight oh you mean like how, how much yeah um if I'm moving 225, 10 plus reps. Okay. So, or if I'm hitting 315 and above, then the feet starts to break down. Yeah. Then that's, and that's the reason why I wor I'll work with like a lighter weight like that because that was the intention. The intention was, you know, I'm squatting barefoot, I'm not trying to load. I'm trying to depth control and feel my feet gripping the ground yeah. and see if there's any breakdown. And, you know, I could I could do that slow and control with 185. It's hard to do that with mm -hmm. 225 and above, that mm -hmm. deep, that slow and control. Well, people don't know this, but, but you know, you had, uh, you didn't have, you had terrible mobility yeah. years ago when yeah. you started, when we, we all, you know, we're working out together. Yeah. So this is a dramatic change. Yeah, yeah. it's been, a, it's been a long time that I've, I've, uh, focused on it and um i tell you what the thing that the thing that's most impressive or that i think it matters the most is the the pain relief mm. um yeah it's great that uh now that i i squat that deep that i've been able to develop my legs with less effort and you know i love that but i actually have completely eliminated my hip and low back pain that i mm. would suffered from for so long and i just 
I get it now. I understand what's gone. What happened is I just I limited my body from going that that deep. It's some. It's a it's a a place that my ankles and my hips should be able to do. It's and a then very, because you never did that you lost it. Yeah, and that and that's exactly was the what the post was all about. Is just you know for those people that you know gravitate towards the other guy uh, that was debating us about the whole parallel thing is okay. You know. just be careful, you know, because I was that same kid who attached himself to people that were, you know, promoting messages like that, that this is, you know, here's the best place to build your quads because as a 20-year-old, that's all I cared about. And then I found myself in my 30s, not able to squat down Mm -hmm. all the way to the ground and sit there comfortably. And, you know, if someone would have told me, like, do you you care if you lose that? I would have said, yeah, I care. Do you think if you went back in time and talked to 20-year-old Adam – do you think you'd be able to convince him? I do. I, I think so because because you I did I, I have more muscle on my legs. Oh, I see what you're saying. You you, you would have to say it that way. Yeah, you'd yeah. Have, yeah. Like, How, hey, by the way, doing it this way, you're not going to lose muscle. Fat yeah, more. like the, the 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 pitch to me would have been this, right? So if if I'm going back and I'm pitching 20 year old me, and I know and I yeah, because this is important because I know there's people listening right now like I don't care. Right, right. I, I don't want to lose muscle by focusing on mobility. The, the, the way I would start it would be like, hey, bro, check this out. I'm going to show you a way for you to do less on your legs and have as much more muscle, if not more muscle. Mm. That's how I'd start it. And then on top of that, I'm going to make sure that you don't have any chronic low back pain that's going to riddle you in the next five oh, to yeah. 10 years. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, to me, that would be the selling point is because if you just went from the pain angle when you're 22 and you feel pain free, it, you're indestructible. Yeah. You're not going to listen. to Right. That. I'm not, yeah. th- I'm not listening yeah, to what that. The hell's pain? Yeah. 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 But if you sold me on that, I would be able to build as much muscle, if not more muscle by learning to go deeper, full range of motion. And here's the steps yep. in order to get there that you need to work on so that you can yeah. do that. Uh, that's what would have probably yeah, sold. Well, me. I've adjusted my workouts a bit, like uh, because I was starting to feel a bit of hip pain. Cut and back so, on Zumba. Yeah, <laughs> I had to stop my shaking <laughs> no more hula so hooping. much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know I was going crazy with that, and um, so I, I just completely. I'm doing unilateral style training, especially on leg day for for uh, for that reason. But I've been actually gaining quite a bit of strength in my overhead press again, which is something I really wanted to uh, you know get back at and, and see what I could press with that. So. Uh, that's been kind of fun, dude, because I've been doing a lot of rotational work, a lot of mobility with my shoulders and kind of reinforcing bulletproofing them. And now I can really see it start to, to elevate. What are you gauging as your, like, what are you measuring for the overhead press? Is it a push press or strict standing strict press? Strict standing, standing press? Strict press. Do you know where you're at right now? Like so, what you were at before? How, how well, much yeah, have you gone up? Yeah. So um, I'm about 205. Mm. Yeah. So, which is good, which is good for, for me. Um, but, uh, I got up to like 225 before strict and then, you know, anything over that, I'm definitely doing so, a push. So your goal is to get past your old yeah, 225. That, that's my goal. So yeah. I got, I got to give you credit because, um, I've been doing a lot of the, the sled and I've made it now a consistent part of my routine, mm-hmm. huge carryovers to yes. my squats and my deadlifts, huge carryovers. To this- deadlift even, huh? Well, anytime my squat goes up, this is true for most people, right? Anytime your squat goes up, your deadlift will probably go up. Not the same the other way around, right? Deadlift goes up doesn't always mean my squat's going to go But if my squat goes up, I know my deadlift goes up. Mm-hmm. And now I don't have your guys' mobility. I can break parallel, so mm-hmm. I'll get the lights if I were to compete or whatever. But I don't go lower than that. I just don't have the mobility for it. But my squat has gone up. Uh, over- dude, you've been working on your squat for some time now, dude. And I, I, you just said, what, you were like 415? Was I was that? doing singles with 415 working yeah, out. That wasn't even awesome. my, my max. I actually felt like I could have gone up as maybe as high as 425. And it was because of the sled. Oh, wow. Because what I'm doing is I'm I, on Saturdays, I load the sled up as much as I, as I can. So it's a heavy drive. Mm-hmm. And then I'll drive it for you know 30 steps in either direction. And it's not... You don't get sore. There's no negatives, right? So there's no eccentric load on it. I'm not mm-hmm. getting sore or anything. I definitely get a little bit of a pump. But then when I go work out with my legs, I'm like, where's this strength coming from? And then what I'm doing also is I told you guys I'm playing around with failures. So for the next three weeks, I cut my volume down. And uh, so rather, I'm literally cut my volume down one third, uh, down a whole third. And then I'm going to failure on a few sets, right? So today was my first going to failure on deadlifts. Uh, oh, ugh. bro. What did you do? <laughs> I put 315 on the bar, and I'm like, I'm going to keep going until if my hands give up or until I know my form is 20 reps. Well, fatigued first. Ugh. 20 reps. My, I was actually able to hold on. Yeah. What started to happen is I started to feel like I was going to rant, like my back well, was Your back to, was getting a little fried. Yeah, so yeah. I that was it. I stopped at 20. But dude, I had to sit down, and uh, you know the the you know the barber was here, right? And so I'm like trying to hurry up so I can get yeah. 
no, dude, I had to rest for like 20 minutes. I'm like, sorry, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make this 8 a.m. because I'm gas. Talking about your workout, your physique that we were talking about the other day, dude. Please tell me you saw uh Carlos his post on Mind Pump oh, Memes. Bro, bro did Which he, one? The one he, he went just on, roasting me. Tell me you did not Oh the, the Adi Asana one, the uh, guy yes. Oh my god. Hey, he I love this. For it. That was I, actually mean. <laughs> that was so oh, mean. Shit, it was dude. so good though. It was yeah. like yeah. you know the, the they, thankfully you could take the you know, Balls you have to have yeah. on this kid, like so. I, I should tell the audience. I think he was he was towing the line there. You know, he's like, I wonder if I can get away with this. I, okay, I, so you know, here's the deal, right? So we were our with our podcast. We've had the podcast for a while, and more recently, we focused on uh, putting the podcast on YouTube and making it kind of a visual show as well. That has grown. Totally different audience, right? So. I would say the crossover, what would you guess the crossover audience is? 10, 15%. Maybe, right? Yeah. So it's like a brand new audience on YouTube. YouTube is m majority male and they're younger. And so they <laughs> fucking roast you sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And, and so the comments are just like, wow, dude. Yeah. They'll, like they're literally going to talk shit about <laughs> your physique. Yeah. Like we're doing a podcast. We'll say something like you're fat or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. So somebody said, I'm, like, I'm sitting already too. Yeah. yeah. Like, Someone said my chest didn't look good. It looks like I had to like gyno or something, which yeah. is not true. Okay. If you ever <laughs> yeah. meet me, you can come touch me and check <laughs> come, for yourself. Come touch, it. Come touch my nipples. Flick yeah. it. You know, yeah, as you, as you walk I by. see what you're That's doing. Right. I like that one. I see yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, there. I play yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. uh, no, so no, so that started. So I talked about it on the podcast, and of course, YouTube is like again, it's troll land, right? So uh, you do that. Yeah. Oh. Next thing you know, people now are fucking well, throwing more. Now you, you brought it up. I believe, more I believe shit. Adam. Uh, yeah, he he, he opened. There's up gonna be the, more shit. The, the I know. Well, you know, I was more impressed with just the balls on Carlos, right? This kid. So this kid. Uh, Super hustler. Mind pump memes, right? Yeah, mind I mean, pump memes. It's not is, even our page. It's, it's not. That's, yeah. So that's why I want to make this clear, right? So he, he's technically not affiliated with mind pump. That he just has been hustling and got our attention. Uh, and a lot of people have done this, by the way. So you know, before you go run out and try and yeah, do this, good luck. It yeah, doesn't really work. Yeah, it doesn't really work. But his did. His did. And I, I thought but he, he caught the flavor somehow. He did. He did a really good job of of catching the voice of the brand. He was not afraid to attack us. Which I think we're we're all okay with. We do, but it. he does it the right way, right? Yeah, he does it in a very playful, yeah. fun way. And uh, when when we first got on the phone, I called him up and and I wanted to see if he was open to um, working with us and actually providing some. In fact, his memes pop up on on uh, YouTube on now. right now. Yeah, so if you're right. watching, you're, if you're seeing memes pop up, that's he's making. And that. this is something that he's just doing on his own. Like he's got he's going to school for his degree right now. He's working full time. He does day trading. Uh, and then he also is. I mean, the kid. You got to respect. And that. he also roasts Sal. Yeah, that's great. And so you guys are next. <laughs> well, we get, well, in I, fact, right now I would love to see a meme pop no. up that just <laughs> fucks up. Bring it, Justin or Adam. <laughs> no, I mean he's he's laid into everybody really well. And when we first got on the phone, he um, he was like. Yeah, I wasn't sure how you guys would take all that. I said, no, I would love it. I absolutely love <laughs> as it. As long as it's relevant to the show. and, yeah. and But also, here's a deal. And this is why I would hate to do any kind of new media as a younger guy, it it would be rough. Oh, because you're so insecure. Yeah, like I don't care, dude. I'm I'm, dude. For, I'm 42. I've been doing this forever. I've heard, I've heard it all. Yeah, it's, it's almost impossible, really, to fuck with me. Um, well, it, why do you think it drives all these young kids to do like stupid shit? Is because of that. I mean, the pressure. I, I you know, that's the part of me that I feel sorry for some of them. You get if you build this this fame on social media, which is so different than like fame in real life because you've impacted people, right? right. There's, there's a difference when you've you've done something in, in real life that mm -hmm. you have impacted. It's drawn people to you. Yeah, it's drawn people to you. Just, hey, look at me. Right, you built these relationships and you fostered that And versus I did something on social media mm -hmm. that's got all this attention and then I've created kind of this monster. Because a lot of times... What, or at least what in, in my experience, right? So I know overgeneralization here. I know there's exceptions to the rule. Um, a lot of these people that get all this fame on social media, a lot of times it's really not even them. Like it's not who they really are. Mm -hmm. it, it's Most a, times. It's a, it's a, an act. And what I've found, these kids that are really good at it, they just, they can get, turn the camera on and they just, they, they're this personality. They become a character. Yeah. They can yeah. become a character. Their personality comes out. They're incredible. And you can always tell because you meet them in person and they're just, they're nothing like this character. And, that might work to build a business and make some money initially, but it, can, it'll eventually wear on you. To totally. Work. Yeah, no. Uh, especially when you meet people or you're afraid to be a particular way because of your fakeness and how you, like, and it, for example, this is a mm -hmm. silly example, mm -hmm. but this actually happened. 
where there was like a vegan influencer. So they had pages about how great veganism is and it's so awesome. And I hate that people hurt animals and they built kind of this small following. And then they were on vacation in like Thailand or something. And they were eating, I don't know what it was, chicken or fish. And there just so happened to be somebody there that followed them, took a picture and posted it. Yeah. Ruined. Done. You're now ruined. Why? Because the person's fake. The person w really wasn't what they said uh, that they were. But I couldn't imagine getting, you know, uh, roasted as a as a twenty year old. Imagine getting your getting your body picked apart as a twenty something oh, year old kid. <laughs> No, you're, you're fat, <laughs> yeah. or your arms don't look good. You're, you're like, <laughs> crush oh, you. Oh my god, what yeah. am I gonna do? I gotta go like work out more, and like, I don't give a fuck. Well, why do you think? <laughs> why do you think it drives them to have that too? That image of like, you, there's a lot of channels. Most of your fitness channels, in fact, that are mm -hmm. are popular. Kids are rocking no shirt on and stuff oh, like yeah. that. I'm like, could you imagine having yeah. to keep How that exhausting. physique up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep that physique up year round. Perfect lighting, otherwise, yeah. It's all and you're slightly off. You bet yeah. your ass they let you know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, fuck what? A, that, by the boy. way, that's a very some burgers this weekend. That's yeah. a very cheap and um, not long term effective way of selling your ideas in fitness. Is mm -hmm. to say, look at me. You know who that works for long term? Like the best of the best. Like I am the strongest man I ever lived. I've lived whatever. But yeah, okay, you look good. Um, it might get you some attention, but you're not going to have a lot of value. It's not going to last very long. You're very, very short term. No thanks. I'd rather be known for my ideas yeah. than what I look like. So, did somebody send over this morning? Uh, did Jackie send over? Uh, did I see OnlyFans is having trainers, coaches on there? No. Who said oh, that? I did see something about yeah. that. Let me see. Yeah, somebody sent that. Was it on that thread? I don't know. Do you I'm know, sure. Justin? I Where did you know. see it? Yeah, it was on. Uh, yeah, it was. I think it was the group one with. with I'm Jackie pretty sure Nolan. Jackie sent that over. No, I can't see it. No? no, no, I can't find it. But yeah, there was. Uh, yeah, maybe it was fake. I don't know if it was real though. It's it's pretty hilarious. Because talk about an easy transition of, uh, you know, yeah, so let's work out. And then also after hours, you know, like, hey. They, uh, that, that company is, I'm going to look it up right now and see if there's oh, an while you're looking it up, speaking of crazy, I cannot believe, I'm like so disappointed in all of us right here. I can't believe we've been podcasting this long mm. and the WeWork story has never came up. I just, I did not know anything about it. And by the way, that also reminds me of this, I'm bouncing around here on you guys. Yeah. You forgot to take your riddle in this morning. We talked, yeah. We talked a long time ago about streaming. Remember? Yeah. The, and you were like, "Oh, I think it'll be this. You know, a lot of different ones, a la carte type of deal." And I'm like, "Yeah, I think like the, there's going to be the dominant ones that are going to come out." And you might be right in this situation, right? But mm. when I, I look at it, might be. What happened? I'm not uh, admitting yet. He's okay. not, not, full. not Yeah, I'm not fully committed to you being <laughs> right yet. Because uh, what what the way it's starting to shape up, like to what you're saying, is that if uh, if streaming media was food. Uh, Netflix is candy and HBO Max and Disney is like a steak. Sure. Mm. That's how I feel. Like, man, I've been I can see that. I've been on HBO Max lately and the content that they're producing way better. Fire. Way better. Yeah. Fire. They're they're sh and they don't put out as much, mm. nowhere near what Netflix does. But, but that's the higher quality. The quality of the shows are I mean, I'm onto this I'm on this series right now called Generation Hustle on HBO Max. And it's a one hour like docu-series. On you know just like it sounds this this generation and their all their hustle and some mm -hmm. of it's like con artists and some crazy stories. Last night I was watching the WeWork story. knew nothing about this guy. This guy Adam, who was the the CEO founder of WeWork, that grew this thing. And maybe Doug can check me on with a dollar amount because I know Doug Doug watched this too. It's like basically an office environment that you rent space in, right? That's yeah, everybody knows model. what it is, right? Well, yeah, I was just making yeah. sure everybody does. Yeah, so yeah. so again, explain that again. So yeah, so a WeWork is a, is is one of many companies, right? They're not the only company that does this. Um, they were one of the early ones that came out with this idea that, you know, a lot of people don't want to pay for a whole office space, but they'll rent for, and we do this. We do this a lot. We have our marketing team who's out in Vegas. They fly in. We rent a space at a yeah. WeWork type of place for three hours. You get a conference room. You get a projector. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, I have friends that are stockbrokers that have the, that work for themselves, and that's what they do. They meet their, their clients in these offices that they rent. Right, right. And he he built this idea around like this this company being like a tech company. And it reminds me of the, this big debate and argument that we just recently got into with my buddy about Tonal mm. and how it's overvalued. 
because they they value it like a tech company and it's just really it's a fitness company first and right. that's where its fault is that's this this is a, a real estate leasing company that's all it is so how are they yeah, making where, the tech? where's the tech angle yeah, yeah i'm wondering that's about where that. they, they try to put the spin on it that it is a a tech company and they're they're revolutionizing how people are going to work in the future the guy who ran this thing okay was super charismatic i mean he just had this ability to capture a room and he had like no real experience leading into this. And he, he was a cult. Dude, well, that so that actually in there, <laughs> much like, more profitable. A really cool uh, quote that I heard somebody in the show say that, and I, I liked it. I, it. He said, um, there's a very thin line between uh, cult and culture. Mm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Because there's there's truth to that, wow, right? Cult is the root word of. Culture. I know, yeah. I know that. So I, I like, <laughs> I like. Oh, the, look at look. There's the there's the. Uh, how 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 fast did it get up to the that, that crazy billion dollar valuation, Doug? And where would it go from? Yeah, it looks like in 2010 it was around zero, and then by 2018 or 19 it had gotten up to like 50. Uh, oh, sorry, 48 million or something like that. Oh, wow, that was billion, good. I should say. Oh, no, billion. billion. Wow. With a B, yeah. Yeah. Wow. What? All on just like a place that For was an office space. Yeah, and he had so many people that were investing him and dumping money in him. He ended up getting out. He sold out his shares, walked away with like a billion dollars, and is all under investigation right now. I didn't know any of this story. Wow, Crazy. I didn't even know this was a thing like happening right. And this, there's we works over here. Mm -hmm. We've been in them before. Mm. So they're super popular. The one we go to, uh, the other one we go to isn't WeWork, so it's Spaces. Yeah, it's another. Yeah, spaces, right? Well, we've been to one, though. We've been to a, we've been, gone to a couple, at least yeah. I don't have. I've been in there. I've met already. Mm. I mean, they're they're just, they're all the same. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they create this environment that, you know, it's ping pong and coffee. There's and nothing they, tech about you, it. You know, speaking of, you, because you said the guy who did this is like the super charismatic guy that didn't yes. know much about the business, but was just very charismatic. Yes. And then I think about like, uh, what was that? That event that was totally blew up with Jaw Rule and that other dude, the Fire, the Fire Festival. Festival. Yes. Okay. And then there was that one woman who was selling that te that medical technology and got all this whatever and turned out to be totally fake. Right. You know. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This happens over and over again because, and this is a great lesson for any kids that are listening or watching this right now. The most, not to say that you should do what they're doing. That's dishonest. But nonetheless, it does prove a point. The most important skill that you could ever develop. That will pay you dividends regardless. I don't care what you do, people skills. And if you can oh, teach yeah. your, and this is, it's a skill. Now, of course, there's just like there's people who are, well, you, can, who are, you can wield it to do bad. Yeah. It, well, you could. Or you can wield it to do good. It's extremely powerful and it'll make you successful or more successful. I don't care what you do. You could be a teacher, you could be a plumber, you could be yeah. a doctor. If you have people skills, you can and it is a skill you can develop. And of course, there's people that are, genetically more gifted in that department, just like there's some people that are just genetically better basketball players. Mm. Nonetheless, you could teach yourself to be a better basketball player. Focus on people skills. It'll it'll pay you back more than any other skill that you could possibly learn. Yeah. And well, it's a fact. This one also, it reminded me so much of Tono because where I see the potential loophole and, and again, the argument that my buddy Brendan was trying to make with it was leaning on growth. And you, if you are a smooth leader like this guy was, he was so great at selling his vision and getting more people and more people to buy in and buy in and give money and give money that he was just building and building and building. I mean, it was like one of the fastest growing companies in history ever at one point, just off of growth. So then he cashed out and then... Yeah, but the finances weren't there. It wasn't very profitable. They were, I mean, the, the, the thing was losing money. But because of the, the the exponential growth year over year, because of the amount of money that they kept taking in, mm. and he kept selling more people and more people to get behind it, that they're, everyone was talking about growth, but nobody was talking about like what the bottom line looked like. Like where where is this really going, and how are we really going to monetize this more ways than just leasing a space? Right. And is this overinflated? And eventually, of course, the balloon popped. Wow. But I mean, that's that's what I think of when I think of what I see with these these companies that are fitness companies that are getting valued as as tech companies like mm -hmm. even if there is the cuz there obviously there is a tech component to tone on comparison to WeWork so I'll I'll, I'll accept that right mm -hmm. that there is a tech component and if we could in a, a a fantasy world believe that everybody when they start their workout they continue forever and they never quit and they input this data yeah. every single day so you can learn all about their behaviors their weight their their eating habits their exercise habits right. that's valuable information that I could see that you could get a big valuation off of but what we know yeah. is that the average person falls off within six weeks yeah that's the bottleneck the bottleneck is how consistent and how often are people going to work out right and that is we know what those numbers look like regardless of uh, the modality and that's the problem. Uh, you know, here's another company that, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm guarantee you, I'm going to piss people off or get people excited or whatever. 
But another company that reminds me of a, a company that gets valued like a tech company and it continues to do this, but the numbers don't make sense is Tesla. Mm -hmm. The numbers do not make sense. Now I know why it's valued so high. It is like a tech company, and then you have Elon Musk. Elon Musk. So is I'm going like to I'm going to defend that one. Okay. So yeah, I'm, defend it. I'm going to I'm going to take the 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 opposing. Here's why I, I do see it being crazy. Right. First of all, if you compare it to like General Motors, Ford, things like that, right? They still own such a fraction of the 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 space. So if you do believe that we're going in this green direction where, you know, these types of, of electric cars is going to be the future. Yeah. I think we all agree there, right? Sure. So we agree, and they would be the, the front runner in that area. So at one point, you have to believe that they are going to be one of the leading car sales. Right? I don't. Oh, you don't? No. Even though you believe, okay, you believe that we're going electric they don't, cars. They don't own, the, they don't own, it's not like they are the only uh, company that has technology to go electric. Yeah, but they're they're leading that technology in that space. Oh, okay. And, and I, so what, what what would you make, what would make you think then that Toyota, Honda? Those massive companies, which their profits and their, 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 their the size dwarfs Tesla, dwarfs You're Tesla. You're right. They don't move in that direction until the market yeah. tells them to move. Now, Tesla can take all these risks and do all that because it's a smaller company. They operate a little differently. Again, Elon has got that celebrity. Like, do you know the CEOs of any other car company? No. No, you don't. Like, Elon is Steve Jobs, right? Well, it's a bet on well, him. And also, too, it's a data thing. Like, so, it's just like everything else. So they're collecting because they have to press so hard at, you know, having autonomous driving cars. Like, they're one of the only companies out there that are actually right. moving that direction. That's not true. It, you okay. have Google and I mean, Apple. There's a, there's a few, but. Are, are doing that. You, no, Toyota si silently, though. No, yeah. Like, he, he's a, the only one outspoken. There's a, there's a lot. It. So Toyota is moving this way there are a lot of them are moving that way but yeah. i would say tesla is leading that technology and that and this is where that technology okay here, here's a difference too okay so we all use our cars okay it's not like fitness yeah i know that right it's sure you, and there and i've been saying this for a while that we haven't quite got here but there's a tremendous value in being able to track people's behavior with where where they drive like imagine you're in a tesla and they have they have been tracking you for the last year of where you stop to get gas, where you stop to go get groceries, all the different foods. Oh yeah, that you the like. possibilities are huge. Yeah, and you imagine driving in your Tesla and you're in traffic and you're one block away from uh, Chick Fil A, my favorite breakfast sandwich, and it goes get uh, one free Chick Fil A sandwich right now if you drive through and buy. Of course, and, you know what I'm saying. And all you, redeem, and all I have to do is hit, and it I, re I redeems. Get, I get I that. I swing in. I get it. Like I mean, I get that. They're going to be the ones that are going to lead that. No, they're not because they're they don't own that tech. That's a lot of companies have that tech and mm -hmm. have more of that. Google already has tons of information on you. Facebook already mm -hmm. does. All it takes is Ford to go with Facebook. Haven't they been trying to partner them. with a, a big tech company like for a while now, and they've been turned down? Well, Why they, do you think they've been turned down? Well, because yeah. a lot of them are doing it themselves. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of them want to do that. They, what they have is is the car element no, that, no. that they haven't figured out yet. None of those other tech companies really proven no, that. Tesla has got that cool factor. It's got Elon Musk yeah. and in and, and their Apple's car. Who the hell knows? But you just wait. You just wait. Ford, Toyota, yeah. Honda. They come and they they're like, oh, okay. The market's really pushing in this direction either because the the government made regulations to make it mandatory or because the market. Because if you actually do the math, I'm telling you right now, if you actually do the math, it still makes no sense to buy an electric car. And if you actually look at the the amount of coal that they have to burn to fuel. Oh, I know. Them. It doesn't add up to not, like being environmentally conscious Not at all. completely, right? Yeah. But it will in the future. When it starts yeah. to get to that when point- When get more efficient with it. It starts to get to that point. Tesla's, I mean, the competition's going to explode. And if you look at their bottom line, you look at their numbers- they're not a super big pro their their valuation of the stock market makes no sense. Uh, I mean, I, I don't totally disagree with that. They're the valuation. Now, if you believe in Elon Musk and you believe he's Tony Stark and you believe he's like this. Well, you don't even which he's a guy that you don't, I, you I mean, don't even have to believe that. You just gotta believe that that the, the old dogs are gonna get knocked off the hill. You just gotta believe that GM, Toyota, Honda, one of the big dogs is is it time that you see a new one that comes in there? Bro. I mean, we okay. Listen, in our in just in the last two decades, look what Kia did. Okay, did you know? Okay, Kia was a, a laughing stock when it first came in, and then it got in partnered with the NBA and these big teams, and now Kia is like one of the number one selling vehicles in the world. Yeah, yeah. but hold on a second. So okay. what, what makes you think that Tesla can't come up and be the same thing? Because they still haven't, and you know Tesla doesn't work with dealerships. You guys know this, right? Yeah. Okay, so you know there's states and areas that you can't sell Teslas because they have regulations and laws that say you have to go through a dealership. Do you know who has their hands in every aspect of car sales in America? All the big car dealerships, all the big car manufacturers. 
It's a, it's a, if you really look at it and break that's it down. A, that's part of why I think the belief and the hype is around him is that he's trying to disrupt all you're that. Right. He, he, it's we're, him. We're, the Uber we're, we're, we're this, bro, we're this close to never going to put a, it this a way. dealership to buy a car in the first Let place. Let me put it this way. If something happened to Elon Musk and he was gone, their stock would plummet. Now, when Steve Jobs left, there was a little dip in the stock, but Apple still held strong because they were really fundamentally. No, they didn't, dude. Apple yeah, was almost took a dive. dude. A Apple almost went bankrupt until Steve Jobs came out and saved no, no, the no, company. No, 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 yeah. no. I'm talking about when, when after the second time when Steve Jobs left, passed away. Oh yeah, but that's uh, his, but that's Apple his leadership had, shadow though. Well, no, it's not a leadership shadow. It's because Apple was a well, yes, I guess it was because Apple fundamentally was yeah. a hugely profitable company. If Elon is gone. They're going to look at the numbers and be like, this doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, that's a bad that's a bad example because that's right now. I mean, just Steve Jobs was Apple. They got they didn't think he was Apple. He left Apple, yeah. it tanked and almost went bankrupt. He brought back Apple, came back, completely changed the game in it and then went on for decades, then yeah. passes on. And by that time, it's established. Right. So we'll see. We'll Tesla's see. Tesla's getting established right now. They're still in that phase. So yes, if Elon died today, yeah. absolutely, I would agree with you that it would shake things up. But I think that he's leading the way on in many ways in that in that they're, space. They're the most visible. They're, they're the pioneers right now, and it's it, yeah. There is a lot of competition coming in that direction, but I do think like there's something to be said about the one that's like the spearhead of the whole. And thing. remember, he doesn't necessarily need to put out. Uh, Honda, Toyota. He doesn't need to put them all out of business. No. He just needs to take a share from all of them. And if he be, if he becomes the electric car guy and takes a majority of that market from all those people, then yes, they all they already make electric cars. So it's not like he owns electric cars. Electric cars are being made, but Tesla is he's is crushing them in comparison Look, to that side. Nobody wants to see him succeed more than I do. I'm a yeah. huge Elon Musk fan. Love the guy. But if you look at the numbers, look how much money he's gotten from governments and states because of them trying to promote green energy and all that stuff, how much money he's had to pay back. And also, if you look at it from a business standpoint and you look at their valuation, it makes zero sense. It's mm. like Dogecoin. It's like hype, right. but it doesn't make any sense. And you look at the potential competition. <laughs> you can't draw those Dogecoin. parallels. Get out of here. Dodge, yeah. Dogecoin is a but completely made up though. thing from yeah, nothing. There's nothing bad. backing I, what it. I Come mean, on. What I mean by that, it's hype. It's based mostly on hype and not on fundamentals. I mean, I don't know. I disagree with that. You ever gotten a Tesla? They're badass. There's no hype they, around that. I didn't say they weren't badass. Well, but that doesn't mean that the numbers work. Well, well okay. So I can't. I mean, There's this restaurant down the street that I used to love going to. They shut down. They didn't profit. They had made the best freaking calzones ever, though. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair. <laughs> that's a fair argument. But I, I, I think that there's he's mm. okay. Another thing that's cool about them that they do that I haven't seen anybody else do. Uh, you know, you if they upgrade anything. That's how how connected they are. Yeah, you I know. Up, it's you like up, an app. Yeah, you can boom. They connect to the car like that. I mean, yep. you, they're doing things so much further ahead than everybody else in that right. space. That I, I I believe that when when they all when they all pivot and move that direction, when we probably have to at one point. I do think that they. Well, that's why I feel like they they look at it most like a tech company than any other yeah. the car, uh, you, you know, competitors because of that fact. Like they're iterating constantly, they're they're adjusting things in terms of like tire pressure, and you know they, they just send it out, yeah. and all of a sudden you have it all upgraded. Oh yeah, what other companies doing that? Yeah, you get a message that says uh, your zero to sixty just went down 0.2 seconds. Yeah, it's like crazy. That's, I mean, it is. It's very cool, but yeah. you wait. The second Apple or Google, which has way more information than uh, than than Tesla, partners with Ford or Toyota or Honda. Yeah, but okay. I mean, that you're, you're talking about a company that has nothing to do with cars. You know what I'm saying? And Apple's already talking about it. But they're not partnering with them. They're doing their own car. They're That's already talking about making is, their own car. Exactly. They're doing their own car. So, you're, so now what I you're saying is stupid. a bunch of non-fitness people coming in the fitness space thinking they're going to make fucking fitness toys. Which you're, which no, you're I'm saying- That's you, the same thing. No. Facebook trying to make cars is, and uh, mm -hmm. autonomous cars and Google trying to make autonomous cars, which is what they're trying to do, is very ballsy because you're going to go against people the that have been making Apple cars. cars is going to be a flop, guaranteed. Uh, of course. Uh, maybe, but here, I'll take it a step further. Uh, do you think the future of cars is people buying their own cars? Or is the future of cars, you hit your Racing app and it picks and you up? Right. Who's going to win that market? Well, if you do that way, route, then Uber's well, got, got a head Uber start on everybody. And, yeah. There you go. So yeah. my point is, my whole point of this is, it's, the Tesla has a lot of hype. The money doesn't make sense. When you look at their profits, you look at their earnings, you look at all their numbers, it just doesn't make sense. Hey, real quick, before we do the rest of the podcast, you know how awesome it feels to get that tight, stiff, full pump? Feels great, right? But what if the pump down below isn't working so well? So we started working with this company, right? They're called Blue Chew. In fact, they're sponsoring this episode, and they're an online service uh, that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis to your door. So you don't need to go to the doctor's office 
uh, to visit them. You don't need to do any of that. It can be done all online. So here's essentially here's how it breaks down, right? So you go to bluechew.com. You meet with one of their medical licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you actually get your prescription sent to your door within days. By the way, their ED medication is less expensive than you'll find at most places. Uh, it's amazing. And again, delivered to your door. I can't think of a more discreet way of getting help in that department. So if you want better performance down below in the bedroom, go check them out. By the way, we have an incredible giveaway or discount code, I should say, with them. Go to bluechew.com, use the promo code Mind Pump, and you'll get your first month for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. All right, enjoy this podcast. First question is from Parker Zimmerman. Is the muscle squeeze or the stretch more important for hypertrophy? Oh. Boy, you know, it's to compare to compare them to is almost impossible because yeah, they're both so both important. Vital. Yeah. They're both very important. You know, there's studies that show that the stretch portion portion of a repetition really stimulates muscle growth and gets more muscle fibers to fire. There are also studies that show this with the squeeze. You got to do both. And this, you know, I know earlier we talked about full range of motion. <coughs> this is part of that. Bodybuilders have known this for a little while. Now, the funny thing is later on, they started doing kind of shorter reps. But you go back into to the, you know, the, the 70s, the golden era of bodybuilding, and it was about full ranges of motion. And the studies support this. Now, here's the value with both of them, okay? The squeeze I find to be more important when you have trouble connecting to a muscle. Well, that's what mm -hmm. uh, Ben Pikulski would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben Pikulski would say if you have uh, weak calves or a weak muscle part, that you probably like lagging. Yeah, lagging. Yeah, that's what I mean by weak, right? Not necessarily strong. Wise, I mean by look the way it looks. Development. <clears throat> so if you have a lagging or weak muscle. Uh, that it's most likely that you have a poor connection in the contracted position, mm -hmm. that you cannot connect very well to the muscle in that in that position. So, and he's got a lot of research to support that argument. I mean, and, based and off I, my experience, I would agree, and I, I would agree too. I think that's I think that's very true. And so, and and then I think in a stretch position is the easiest place for somebody to feel. That's where the most damage is done, right? So, mm -hmm. a lot of the yeah. research on the eccentric portion mm -hmm. of the exercise, the negative, the way down, and, and the stretch of the muscle. That's where more of the muscle Breaks fiber damage. Down a lot more, yeah. yeah, so there, there is. This is not an either or. They both are extremely valuable. Both should be included in your hypertrophy training. And and I'll take it one step further, which I say this on the show all the time: is the one that will probably give you the most bang for your buck is the one that you neglect the most. So if you're somebody who trains in the stretch position all the time and you like right. to really focus on that, but you never really focus on the contraction in the this squeeze. is where we get into all the camps, right? Right. You know, and it's it, it's just funny because you know your muscle it, it's going to contract. You have your concentric contraction. You have your isometric contraction. You have your eccentric contraction. There's like those three factors just by themselves. Like you could develop a training protocol that's just like yeah. I'm just going to focus and just on this particular element of of the train. So both of them to me are, are massively yeah. valuable, and you should integrate both. You know, today I saw Justin doing an exercise that uh, really exemplified both of these. So he was doing uh, flies, but they were alternating, right? All oh, right. So the arm that was up, and I could tell he was doing this. By the way, you'd make a good bodybuilder. I know you act like you don't. Try to connect, but you're all about connection. It's just from oh, a yeah, performance yeah, standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But he was squeezing, right? So, like squeezing the left pec while the right pec goes down to stretch. So, long squeeze, long stretch, and then alternating. That's like a great example of taking advantage of both. Right. Mm -hmm. But I remember as a trainer, when I would have a client that would say, and I figured it took me a while to figure this out, but if I had a client that said, I don't feel my chest on a bench press, or I don't feel my glutes in a squat. One of, the, one of the ways I would get them to feel it would be right before we do the squat, I'd have them focus on squeezing that muscle in its fully contracted position and then hold the squeeze mm -hmm. for a long period of time until they could really feel that they could connect to it. Then we'd go do the exercise and boom, they were connected. And it shows up. Yeah. Now the stretch, stre and when, you're, when you can connect to a muscle, the stretch is great, especially if you exaggerate the stretch or hold the stretch. You ever do that where you get into a position- and you're doing the fly or whatever, and you're holding that bottom position while maintaining control, and then do some reps. Phenomenal. There's a what's a, there's a name for that too. Uh, intra stretching. I forget what. Oh, the intra set stretch. stretching. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's there's uh, I forget what the, that's a technique also that a lot of bodybuilders use. Mm -hmm. Where between sets they'll do they that. do deep stretches mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they'll hold like a really heavy weight for I don't know a short period of time and then go back to it. Next question is from Jamil A one forty four. I'm absolute dog shit at pull ups. Could doing some pull-ups every day increase my proficiency? 
If so, how many would you recommend per day? Yeah, the the most yeah, the best thing you can do. effective strategy that you can have to getting good at one particular exercise is to literally practice it every day. Now, I said practice, not train it. So here's the key here. Let's say this person can do max five pull-ups. So five is their absolute max. You're not going to do five pull-ups every single day. It's way too intense. Maybe do one or two mm-hmm. throughout the day. So you have a pull-up bar in your wherever, your closet or whatever, and maybe four or five times a day, you walk by the pull-up bar and you do like one or two and then you drop it and then you do whatever you're going to do and a couple hours later, you do it right. again. You could do this with squats. You could do this with bench press. You could do this with any exercise, this, this, this constant kind of low to moderate intensity of practice builds strength so fast. It's one of the best techniques I've ever tried for myself for building strength. Well, you know, I like that uh, a lot because you're fresh. You're, you're, you know, you're in a position where if I'm going to go like try to perform this exercise, I'm going to really work on, this is going to be like the best, like I have the best energy going in. My technique is going to be the best. I can, I can connect to my body and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to come back when I'm fresh again versus just trying to grind my way through it. A lot of times we get into that, you know, rep thing where we have to like get all these reps in just because, and, and what we're doing is we're promoting like sloppy form We're we're promoting, uh, you know, not the optimal version of that where I can build upon. So it's to keep doing that and then keep fresh and, and, and taking reps when, you know, you walk by like just one to two, I think is perfect. You know, this is so true that, um, I was stronger at pull up. So I, you know, later on in my, my late twenties, uh, and thirties, I got to the place where I could deadlift over 500 pounds. So you think I had this really massively strong back, but I could do more pull ups when I was like 18, 19 years old. And why that was, was when I, I worked at the dairy and we used to have this uh, this bar that I had to walk under to go get the cows. And I'd had to do that 120 times like a day. And like every couple of times I would just jump up and bah, bah, hit two pull-ups and then go back to my work. Just and, all day. Yeah, all day long. And I was listening to music, doing my thing. I wasn't even thinking of it like a workout. I was just messing around. I was killing time for the cows to walk in or something like that. So I'd jump up and do it. And I just kind of played around with that. And I did that for so many years working there. Then I'd go in the gym and I could rep out 25 plus pull like nothing like super pull-ups were easy for me back then so i've had more uh, i've had a hard time getting good at pull-ups as i've gotten older but i've never applied that level of frequency that i did when i was 18 so when you tell stories like that about how you know this is the way to do it like it doesn't matter how strong you are on your back and all these other exercises it's very specific to pulling up the best thing you could possibly do is just frequently do it you cannot and the only way you can do too much of it is if the intensity of it by how much how yes. much you do like you said so yes. the idea is not do you you don't want to train it to failure well, you literally practice it that's right you do not want to train it to failure when you do that you're if i could do 20 pull-ups i'm only doing a couple of those and then getting down let me give you another example let's say your max squat is let's say you could do 315, 315 pounds for 12 reps, and that's failure. So 315, 12 reps, and you're like, I want to get stronger at squats. Well, here's what you could do. Let's just say you had a squat rack in your garage, put 315 on it, and I don't know, every two or three hours, go out there and do three, four reps. That's it. So you could do 12, just do like three reps every two or three hours. So you're just going out, you're practicing three reps. Obviously, the intensity is low. Mm-hmm. And by the way, here, by the way, keep doing that. Don't do more because you think you got stronger. Do that for like four weeks. At the end of four, and keep doing three or four. Even if the three or four feels super easy, stick to it. At the end of the four weeks, go and see what your max is, and you'll be very surprised at how strong you got. This was a technique that was utilized by the Soviets with uh, Olympic weightlifting. Mm -hmm. And Olympic weightlifters, it's, by the way, of all the resistance training kind of like strength sports that you'll find, by far the most science has been applied yeah. they to They do the best job of actually approaching it like they're practicing. Yes. Yeah, constantly. And the Chinese now are phenomenal at this. You look at the Chinese weightlifters and they're just doing tremendous and they just they practice. They practice all day long and they train at these kind of sub maximal loads. Next question is from Taylor Becca. When should mus- muscle finishers be used and how important are they? Who picked the questions today? I did. Who did? Yeah. Uh, you did this one on Absolutely. purpose, right? Here. So, so mu- muscle finishers are, that's bodybuilding jargon, right? And that basically means exercises you do at the end of a workout to mm. give you a better pump. And they typically are isolation exercises, cable exercises, <laughs> machines. And it's like, okay, so, you know, for chest, a finisher would be like a cable crossover, right? Or for, for delts, it might be like a lateral, 
you know, or for biceps, like it might be like a, to any as many reps as possible yeah, or something. Exactly, it's just to kind of squeeze more blood in the muscle. So, you know, when should they be used? Well, if you're going to do them like a bodybuilder, I do them at the end of the workout, obviously. But really, the value of finishers is that these are exercises that don't produce a lot of damage, but they allow you to add more volume. That's really what it is. So, okay, so I did the bulk of my workout. I know I can add more volume, but if I let's say it's chest again, and I just said cable crossovers, right? I just finished my chest workout. If I do three more sets of bench press, it's it's a compound lift. There's a lot of load. It causes a lot of damage. That'll tip me over over training. How can I add more volume without overtraining? I know I'll pick this exercise that doesn't cause a lot of damage and just do do some more extra. I mean, more reps. when you're when you're working on the the pump, right? So you're when you're chasing uh, the pump, I see value in these. Or when you are really trying to work on connection, right? Get more connection to a, a muscle, right? I and similar to what we were talking about earlier about the stretch or the contraction position, I see value in these things. Other than that, I actually see them. Uh, I see them abused more in that space. Totally. So I, I, I remember training with obviously a lot of competitors when I was competing and a lot of their programming looked like this. They, they start with the, and we'll just use chest since all of them love to do chest, right? They start with either some good dumbbell press or maybe a barbell chest. And then the next three exercises that we would do, okay. Cause there's times where I'd hop in with guys, let them lead the workout just to see what they would do. You know, we would do, you know, this, this incline, you know, barbell bench press to start off. I'm like, all right, cool. This routine's starting good. And then we go over and we hit like the hammer strength machine. Then we do cable crossovers and a yeah, bunch of finishers. Yeah. A bunch of finishers. And we're just chasing the pump. The whole workout was that it was like, we did like one, what I would consider big bang for your buck exercise. The one that's really going to grow my chest. The one that's really going to make the most difference. We did one exercise of that. We did three sets and then we're already out of it. Mm -hmm. And now we're on to all these other exercises where where we're just pumping fluid in there. And psychologically, it would trick these guys to thinking that they're, because they get all pumped full of fluid. You're drinking yeah. water, you're doing high repetitions, you're connected really well to it, you get a lot of tension on it because it's cable work. And so they get all this fluid filled in, but then their chest doesn't grow that much because mm -hmm. they're, they're missing out on the really good exercises. Now, I prefer if I'm doing, if you're doing single muscles or you know one muscle part or two muscles per workout, I want to get at least two or three really good compound type exercises, right. dumbbell, barbell type work. And then the very last exercise, the one exercise I'll do is this, you know, machine or cable work to kind of. But you would never trade uh, a big bang for your buck exercise. Never. For a finisher. Never. No. And that, that and that's what's most common. So the people that talk about finishers and stuff, what ends up happening is some kid sees that like, oh my God, I so felt that. Or they look at themselves in the mirror and they're all pumped up from it. And they're like, oh, it must have worked the best. And then, they're, they're, then their programming starts to look like a bunch of finishers and maybe one or two really good exercises in there. And it's like, so that's the, that's the problem I see that this jargon comes from the bodybuilding space and they're the most guilty of, of abusing these types of exercises. Mm -hmm. One of the best things I ever did was to get away from that and train more like a power, what, what benefited me the most as a bodybuilder was actually training more like a powerlifter and getting away from all these supersetting, finisher, pumping type of exercises because I was missing out on the things that were really building the most muscle. Next question is from Elevated Primate. How much daily cardio is enough? Uh, it really depends. It uh, depends a lot on what you mean uh, by enough. Yeah, define cardio too. Yeah, like are you looking for athletic performance, in which case you want to do the right amount of cardio to maximize the type of performance you're looking for? Is it for fat loss? If it's for fat loss, that's nutrition, uh, and cardio is is completely not needed whatsoever. If it's for health... <clears throat> How much cardio is enough? Here's the best thing you could do for health uh, from a cardio standpoint. Just make sure you walk a lot throughout the day. That's mm -hmm. actually the best possible thing you could do for longevity and for health. And the best way to do that is rather than doing one big long walk a day is to do several walks throughout the day um, in order to keep the body moving, keep things inflammation down, and keep you healthy. Uh, from a, but from a fat loss, because this is probably from a fat loss perspective, Zero. Zero mm -hmm. isn't it. You don't need any cardio to burn body fat. It's all a nutrition as a nutrition thing. And if you use cardio for fat loss, then you're you're doing something that's not very effective. Maybe for a couple of weeks, but that's well, it. Well, that's usually the hardest pill to swallow is is to understand that what the 
conventional view of cardio really is unnecessary. Uh, you can get a lot of uh, of, of that uh, burned calorie. If that's your, your entire goal, you could really just focus on upping your activity levels and moving around and uh, picking things up and, uh, you know, taking every opportunity to, uh, you know, move more, like park further away. There's just like all kinds of different types of strategies you can implement throughout your day that uh, will actually have more of an impact because it's, it's, it's a lifestyle shift uh, versus to just like dedicate myself to an hour on the trip treadmill of just like running like a you know a hamster on a hamster wheel so my, my answer would be what whatever you can see yourself doing for the rest of your life is enough right so if you bring up your point sal like you know i could i could see myself just breaking up the day with two or three good long 20 minute walks every day forever i could do that i could definitely see myself that maybe you love to get on the elliptical maybe you love to row and you're like man i love to row for 30 minutes is that okay can i do that every day if you love to do it and you could do it for the rest of your life that's great i, I think that's that's i think there's lots of benefits to doing that uh, but to your point most people ask this question because they think they need to do it in order to lose body fat or to build right. the physique they want and that's just that's a that's a terrible rabbit hole to go down because when you start doing that all you are is chasing the manual calorie burn right and we want to get to a place where your body is automatically burning those calories to keep you in that shape and it's not mandatory that you get on the treadmill for an hour every single day but there are people that find that type of exercise is very therapeutic and yeah. enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So I also like a don't form of meditation. Yeah, I don't want to discourage that person. If you love to get in the pool and swim thirty to fifty laps a day, and it's therapeutic, yeah, so long as it's it's appropriate and you're not overdoing it, keep going. Yeah, it's good for you. Yeah, and you see yourself, man. I, I love the pool so much, Adam. I could do this for the rest of my life. Then then keep it going. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's enough for you. But if you're asking this question because you're trying to to get to this body that you want mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out how much is enough for me to get there. Well, you don't need any, you could do it all through weight training and it's probably better to do it all through weight training that way. Well, I, I would actually argue that mobility is more important and that would be my angle. And it, this is, this is me also like going back and I know, uh, you know, this is way back when I was talking about, um, going through this whole football thing again. Like we're old men and we're deciding to play football again. And, and everybody's trying to get on this hustle to get back in shape and to, to get in this cardiovascular shape. And I was like trying to tell everybody, no, like we need to focus on your joints. We need to focus on the stability element. We need to focus on, you know, like if you're going to twist, that's where the, the, the problem is going to occur. Like sure. if you want to do anything fast twitch, you want to have uh, these type of athletic abilities again. Uh, the, the biggest work that you need to put in is to really reinforce the joints because that's what you're going to be able to build upon it. And to the endurance component of it, yes, that's great and that's a fun component, but it's something that you can easily get, to, you know, uh, for a few weeks, if not a month or so, uh, of really like getting that back. Yeah, no, that's a good point. You know, it's funny. I, I last week I was interviewed by Rich Gaspari and John Romano for their podcast, right? So Rich Rich Gaspari, if you don't know who he is, he was one of the top bodybuilders in the '80s, and he was the first bodybuilder to bring cross striations to the stage. So this guy shows up, this is in the eighties and he has g shredded glutes, like lines in his butt cheeks. Right. And it freaked everybody out. So that was Gaspar. He was like the first shredded bodybuilder. You know how much cardio he did during his pre-contest prep? Mm. Zero. Mm. He never did cardio. And he told me that he's like, it's so funny how people think you got to do cardio to burn body fat. He goes, I never did cardio ever. I did my resistance training and then I would do my diet. And that's how I got super shredded. And I, and I said, what about stamina? And he goes, well, I mean, I don't, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't trying to get stamina to run long distances. He goes, but believe me, when I'm doing supersets and giant sets and, yeah. you know, 20 rep sets of squats, because oh, yeah. I built a it's lot a of heart stamina. pumping. Yeah. Workout. Well, the, my entire time competing, uh, two weeks, dude. That's it. You did last two weeks. Last two yeah. weeks. And the beauty of that, and that's what I try to explain to clients when I would coach them that for com uh, competing, is that if you do a really good job of programming right and dieting correctly and building a metabolism up, it's rad because that last two weeks I can make some serious moves. Mm -hmm. If I can't, if I if I was off a little bit, like you know, before every show I go, okay, I've got twelve weeks until the show. I have an idea, of kind of where I'm at, body fat. I have an idea, of kind of how my body looks. Okay, let's go, and I start I start training, and I'm and I'm critiquing every week, like how I'm shaping up and how my body's changing. Let's say I get down to like week three or so, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm a little bit heavier, a little more, more body fat than I should be right now. Now, all of a sudden, I kick up cardio, which I hadn't been doing whatsoever. Oh, my, I mean, my body would respond right away versus what you see in the space 
is as soon as someone starts their exercise routine, they automatically just part of it is 30 minutes to an hour on the tre treadmill or the Stairmaster. And it's like, you do know that once you've done that for about two weeks, the body is already getting really adapted to it. So the, the change that you're looking for from that. And then God forbid you stop it. That, right, exactly. Yeah. It's so minimal. I would rather think of that. That's something that I got in my back pocket that if I really need to ramp up the results in the final two weeks, I got it. And so many times... It was like like Gaspari, it would be almost none. You know, I'd almost I'd walking. That was like my cardio would be walking for some steps and I would manage it that way. And only if I had to ramp it up for 30 minutes to an hour towards the last two weeks. Mm, that's great. Look, if you like our content, if you think Mind Pump is informative, you will love mindpumpfree.com. That's where we have all of our fitness guides. We have guides on helping people build muscle, target specific body parts. So we have guides for arms and shoulders and legs and butt. We even have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Somebody listening might think, oh, that means the first month or two, nothing happens. No, no, no. We said the scale might not move. That's right. That doesn't mean nothing happened. Remember the earlier example of where I said, <clears throat> person who does it wrong loses 10 pounds, but five pounds of muscle, five pounds of fat. So they're the same. They're just smaller, same body fat percentage. What we're talking about is the scale doesn't move 